Coach will, will start with you last year, uh, finished up six and four and finished the winning season for the 18th straight year at Rice. This year, there are some question marks and holes to fill like some key positions. We'll first start from the offensive side of the ball, how you guys look heading up 2018. Uh, happy with where we're at through the summer. Um, we got a lot of guys that have experience, um, maybe not on Friday night. Uh, got some juniors and seniors that have been in the program for a while. And, uh, it's their opportunity now to be able to, to take their shot. So feel very comfortable where we are. We're nowhere close where we need to be. Um, but through the summer, uh, got our base stuff installed, uh, both offensively and defensively. So feel happy with where we're at and the guys we have there um, for our offense, for sure. Expectations are a good thing, and expectations are high at rise. You know, after a 6-4 and four season, is there a little more urgency in the offseason heading into 2019? Yeah, I think there's always a sense of urgency in, in whatever season we're going into. Uh, love our fans, love our community, love our school. Um, but it is it's very well known that the expectations are high, and rightfully so. Uh, you know, when we come off of a season like we had, hey, I, I think we forget a lot of times that winning is hard. I think, I think sometimes our society and uh, the media and stuff think it's real easy to just kind of show up and, and go through it and show up on August 5th and things just kind of happen. It doesn't work like that. Uh, but 6 and 4 is. is we won some ball games. We're happy with one of those ball games. We just got to clean some things up. Got to clean some things up offensively. Uh, coaching staff as, as well. Uh, play calling and, and how we're handling things. So, uh, you know, I, I think that going into a season, um, we're excited. You know, going into the season, we're excited about the opportunity that some of our guys get to get to play and get their shot to, to be a role player and, and and be a player on our football team. Now the official practice starts uh, one week from today. Throughout all your workouts in the off season, what are the one or two things that have really stood out to you about this? The one thing that, that I've noticed more about this team than, than the team we've had in a while, uh, they work, they work hard. Um, <clears throat> very seldom, I can't even well one we've had one uh, practice where I just thought, gosh, we just didn't get anything out. Um, they show up every day. Um, they're very coachable, uh, which is uh, something hard to find nowadays. It's, it's kids that are coachable and kids that understand what it is to be coached hard. Um, just because you, you coach them hard and you get on them, you don't wreck them, it doesn't mean you don't like them. Um, that's not this group. This group is, is taken to it. Um, they're a little bit more blue collar than we had in China. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah. Right, any questions? Are those new helmets this year? Absolutely not. I'm trying to get our um, city AD to fork out the money for these. Uh, about $100 a piece. This is a mock-up helmet. I bring it every year and I, I see how much see, see how much uh, publicity it gets because they think that we're going to them, but we ain't going to them. Uh, I guess just for both players, you guys have lost, I think, in the, the first week of the sectional, the, each of the last two years. Um, is, is that something that you think of even in the offseason, you know, getting deeper into the postseason? Or kind of just what are your thoughts on that, you know, heading into this year? Well, um, with our class, it's it's well known throughout the seniors for this year that we haven't won. We've never won playoff. Our class has I think that's in all of our minds, but it's definitely something that we work for. But it's, it's not our main priority we're focused on right now. We're just we're focused on getting these young guys in shape and looking to have a good season this year. Uh, uh, like Dan said, uh, along with me, I have one playoff game at the right, so we're always looking to better ourselves to be able to do that. But like I said, it's not always on our minds. So. Oh, uh, Andy, I mean, Reed's your new quarterback. Just what does he bring to the field that can bring you success and more wins? Yeah, I think uh, Reed's fighting for the position. Okay. We don't really, we haven't really slated him the quarterback yet. But uh, let's be real honest, uh, Reed, you know, fought for that position last year. We went a different way. Um, played for us on defense a little bit. One thing that Reed has done over the last year is, for one, he's grown about five inches. He's gained about 40 pounds, which doesn't hurt. Um, he's a big physical kid. 
Um, he brings a little bit of a maturity, even for as young as he is. He brings a little bit of maturity. Um, he's a guy that understands what it is to be coached hard. I've said things to him. Most type of quarterbacks are off limits. you got to hire a quarterback coach that can coddle them and stroke them and not yell at them. And, um, he's not that way. I can say things to him that I would, I would tell our right guard or our right tackle. And uh, he takes it in the vein that it's given, so he's very coachable. Uh, and he's a leader. You know, I, I think that we do a lot of stuff at Rice to try to, to build our leadership and to grow our leadership amongst everybody. Uh, but the bottom line, bottom line is leaders are leaders. And uh, kids are going to follow those guys that are natural leaders. And I, I really feel like he's one of those natural leaders um, on our football team. The guys look up to the guys that follow him. Coach, if you could change one rule about high school football, what would you change? That's a good one. <clears throat> this is just, <laughs> this is coming from me. I, I, I played college ball in Western Kentucky and we ran the triple option. I would love for offensive linemen to, to be able to cut down the field. There's nothing better than running down the second level and chopping the safety, man. It was, that was one of the best feelings in the world. Uh, Probably not what you were looking for, but man, as an offensive line guy, there was nothing better to get to the second or third level and being able to cut a little safety. So uh, I would change that if I could if I could change anything. All right, uh, Owen. I mean, like you said, a lot of success here at Rides and for a very long time. Just what does it mean to wear that helmet and step into the bowl and play Friday nights? You know, I I'm a fourth generation Westlife family. And I grew up watching Mets football in the bowl, running around the stadium. But only these past couple years before I got to high school, I started watching the game. And now that I'm actually wearing the helmet, strapping up, it, it means a lot more to not just me, but the school around me and all my friends and family. And, you know, it, it means something to them, too, that they have, they're, they're still represented out there. But, I mean, it, it's a special thing. Question for both players and access with the ball state. Um, certainly, the bowl is a very special place to play high school football. What's your guys' favorite part of a game day on Friday night? Uh, my favorite part personally is running out of the Panther uh, to start the game. I think it, it's something you don't get to feel uh, all your life. It's just something that's there for a short amount of time. And that's something that I, me personally, I'll cherish the rest of my life. Probably my favorite part is pregame. Uh, bowl's empty. It's it's me and usually it's Reed throwing out there. I've got my got my headphones on, but it's it's kind of a place where I can clear my mind where everything goes crazy. Coach, what about you? What's your favorite part? I don't know. I, I've been around it a long time. Um, been a part of Wright's football since I was eight, I guess. With my dad being the head coach there. And <clears throat> Been to a lot of practices, uh, been to a lot of road games, been to a lot of games at, at the city fields. I can remember I just love going to Hidlow on the bus. Um, we play it when there's grass or mud. Um, I don't know. That's a that's a good question. I, there is something um, there is something extremely special about watching it fill up. Um, sitting in the office and you're, you're trying to calm your nerves down, you got your butterflies and you're wondering if, who's going to show up, what players are going to play, uh, what team is going to show up and how things are going to go. And you just kind of sit back and you look and you, you watch it fill up as, as 5.30 rolls on and then 6 o'clock and then uh, you're on the field doing pregame and fans are, are still pouring in. Um, that's pretty special. I think um, I think sometimes at rights we we overlook um, how much support we really have through our community and, and the tradition that, that we have because we're involved in it every day. The guys go out and practice on the game field, and uh, you know they they don't really maybe soak in how special it really is and how lucky and blessed they really are to be able to have a facility and be able to play there and I know that's like that for everybody I get it um, but you know the things that we have and the place that we're able to play and, and the support that we have for our community and our school 
you know, it's it's pretty special when you really sit back and look at it and uh, see people coming Friday night. You know, sometimes some of those people, it's like church. You know, they, they come and it's Friday night, there's a game, they're going to go, and they're going to talk to some people, and they're going to listen to the preacher or watch the game, and then they're going to get up and go home and talk about for a week and come back next Friday and do the same thing. So um, it's pretty special uh, to watch it, watch the support, and watch watch the people roll in and, and find what we do and the things that we're trying to accomplish with these young men. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that that's important to uh, I just don't want to take that for granted. So, um, to me, it, it, that's one of the things that, that I'll cherish standing out there, talking with coaches. I, I see some guys out here, Coach Hurt and I are good friends. And, and uh, I love finding him before the game, being able to talk to him. And uh, I know Coach Gable and I can talk a lot. And Coach Hurley and I are good friends. And, um, you know, it's just, it's pretty special with the, the relationships we have with these, with these coaches. And, uh, we're all in this thing really together. Uh, there's about a three-hour period on Friday night where we don't like each other very much. Uh, but other than that, we're in it uh, for each other and try to help each other out. And I feel like we're all trying to do the same thing, and it's and it's grow young men into leaders. And this world is in desperate need of that for sure. Any final questions? All right, thanks, guys. Love this year.